It's Friday, April 12, 2024, and I'm Dave Solk. Three things to know today. A lone Microsoft engineer thwarts a potential global cyber attack through a Linux backdoor discovery. NIST tackles the vulnerability database backlog with public-private consortium and staff reassignments. And safeguarding SMBs, the dual role of AI in preventing and detecting brand spoofing attacks. This is the business of tech. You're looking for security solutions for your MSP, and Bitdefender has new ones for you. With advanced protection, simplified management, 24 by 7 analyst-led security, threat hunting, and end-to-end protection options, it's time to check out Bitdefender's new offerings. With the ability to customize the security solution for what you and your customers need, you'll find a cost-effective selection with adaptive and scalable security. Want to check it out? Bitdefender would love to schedule a demo for you. Just visit bitdefender.com or the link in the show notes. There are a ton of cybersecurity stories to cover today, so let's do the commercial ones first. I didn't want to miss this story from last week. One guy saved us all from a massive supply chain attack. Andreas Freunoit, a software engineer at Microsoft, inadvertently discovered a backdoor hidden in a piece of software that's part of Linux. This backdoor could have led to a major cyber attack with significant damage. His findings were sent to open source software developers who quickly developed a fix. If undetected, the backdoor would have given its creators access to millions of computers worldwide. The attacker's identity remains unknown, but the sophistication of the attack suggests the involvement of a nation with advanced hacking capabilities. The price of zero-day exploits is rising as companies strengthen their products against attackers. Startup Crowdfence is offering millions of dollars for tools to hack iPhones, Android devices, WhatsApp, and iMessage. These zero-days rely on unpatched vulnerabilities in software and are commonly acquired by companies like Crowdfence and Zerodium to be sold to government agencies or contractors. The price increase is attributed to the improved security measures implemented by companies like Apple, Microsoft, and Google. As exploiting vulnerabilities becomes more challenging, the cost of zero-day exploits is expected to continue increasing. A misconfigured SaaS application caused a recent data breach at Home Depot. The breach exposed employee information and highlights the growing problem of SaaS-based attacks. Security experts emphasizes the need for firms to improve their SaaS security practices and implement controls to prevent data breaches. Why do we care? If you ever wonder about, can one person make a difference, remember that just one guy spotted a massive issue. See something, say something is a cliche for a reason. SaaS misconfigurations are an area of interest for ongoing security management. My continued interest in cloud and SaaS management is because of this issue. It's an ongoing monitoring and management problem, and one that's still significantly difficult to handle in a multi-tenant, multi-customer way. CISA and NIST have been busy, so let's cover that as we look at moves by the federal government in cyber. I previously discussed how the U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology is facing a backlog of vulnerability analysis in the National Vulnerability Database due to a lack of interagency support. NIST has fallen behind in adding essential enrichment information to new CVE entries, and the Institute analyzed only 199 of the 3,370 CVEs it received last month. New information is that NIST is working to establish a public-private consortium to improve the NVD and is prioritizing analysis of the most significant vulnerabilities when reassigning staff to deal with the backlog. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency has directed federal agencies to investigate if Russian hackers stole Microsoft account details. The hackers gain access to sensitive information from agencies by compromising Microsoft's corporate email accounts and CISA has deemed the stolen emails a grave risk to the federal government. Affected agencies have been instructed to take immediate remediation action, reset credentials, and perform a cybersecurity impact analysis. And according to a report from the U.S. Cyber Safety Review Board, the 2023 Microsoft Cloud email breach that impacted federal agencies was preventable and attributed to Microsoft's inadequate security culture. The report highlights a cascade of errors by Microsoft, including failure to detect compromises 
and inaccurate public statements. The board recommends major changes and restoration of security as a top corporate priority for Microsoft. That report is also noted as causing significant damage to Microsoft's reputation with the U.S. government. And CISA has made its malware next-gen analysis system publicly available, allowing any organization or person to submit malware samples for analysis. The system, designed to handle the growing workload of cyber threat analysis, offers advanced analysis capabilities and encourages registration and submission of suspicious files for analysis. However, only CISA analysts and vetted individuals can access the analysis report. The Pentagon has officially established the Office of the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Cyber Policy, giving cybersecurity the focus and attention intended by Congress. Ashley Manning will lead the office until a Senate-confirmed leader is appointed, and President Biden has nominated Michael Sulemer for the position. Why do we care? NIST is a linchpin in the U.S.'s approach to technology, so its funding and ability to execute matter. I continue to wonder about reputational damage. Sure, the stories say the damage is there. I suspect the change will come with increased standards and requirements, not an exodus. That's good news for the rest of us. The power of the purse to make a difference. And we'll wrap up the week with some of those big ideas. Let's start with a piece in The Atlantic called The Flaw That Could Ruin Generative AI. A technical problem called memorization poses a significant threat to generative AI companies. Large language models can reproduce copyrighted texts, undermining the fair use argument. Lawsuits filed by Universal Music Group and the New York Times highlight the issue and its potential impact on the generative AI industry. And speaking of generative AI, Medical Economics reports on the ability of chatbots to replace doctors. A recent American Journal of Preventative Medicine study evaluated the accuracy of AI models, ChatGPT4 and BARC, in providing preventative medicine and primary care recommendations. The findings showed that ChatGPT4 had 28.6% accurate responses, 42.8% accurate with missing information, and 28.6% inaccurate responses. BARD, however, demonstrated higher accuracy rates with 53.6% accurate responses, 28.6% accurate with missing information, and 17.8% inaccurate responses. Both models struggled with immunization-related questions, and ChatGPT4's outdated recommendations highlighted the need for continuous updates in AI systems. Or let's consider the dual role of SMB brand spoofing with an article from Dark Reading. While AI makes it easier for adversaries to impersonate brands and carry out spoofing attacks, it also enables organizations to detect and block such attacks. Small to mid-sized businesses are particularly vulnerable to brand spoofing, and AI-powered security tools can help them fight back. SMBs face numerous cyber attacks, brand spoofing being a pernicious threat. AI-generated fake content makes it easier for hackers to impersonate smaller brands. However, security architects are using AI to develop tools that can detect and block impersonation attacks, providing SMBs with better defense capabilities. In addition to AI, implementing solutions like DMARC and maintaining open communication with customers and vendors can also help prevent brand spoofing. And a harrowing look at the deepfake nudes in high schools in the New York Times. I'll quote in early paragraphs. In October, some 10th grade girls at Westfield High School, including Miss Manny's 14-year-old daughter, Francesca, alerted administrators that boys in their class had used artificial intelligence software to fabricate sexually explicit images of them and were circulating the fake pictures. Five months later, the Mannies and other families say the district has done little to publicly address the doctored images or update school policies to hinder exploitative AI use. End quote. That's not the only example in the article, and technologists should understand this issue. Why do we care? That New York Times article is sensitive enough that the AI editors I work with refuse to analyze it. That should tell you something. Understanding these challenges is the first key step in delivering high-value services to customers. Like all technologies, there are balances to strike, and your role is knowing which tool for which job. 
and setting those policies. Today's episode is supported by Huntress. You want to focus on your clients and are always looking for ways to get more time. Use Huntress's fully managed cybersecurity platform to fight off cyber threats. Huntress is more than cybersecurity software for endpoints and identities. It's a 24 by 7 security operations center. It's security awareness training, community engagement, and dedicated partner support with an average CSAT score of 99.3%. Technology can only get you so far. Human expertise is what's needed to truly elevate and protect small businesses, and you get that with Huntress. Secure your clients and help them thrive with the number one rated EDR for SMBs on G2. Visit Huntress.com slash MSP Radio to find out more. Thanks for listening. Today is National Grilled Cheese Sandwich Day. Need I say more? Have a question you want answered? Take those listener questions and I answer them on the live Wednesday show. Send them in to question at msbradio.com. Next week, our live show, 3 p.m. on YouTube and LinkedIn. You got a comment or a thought on a story? Put it in the comments if you're on YouTube or reach out on LinkedIn if you're listening to the podcast. You'll get this week's live episode on the podcast feed on Saturday and on Sunday, an interview with John Gillum talking about managing AI risks and finding those AI-generated content pieces and how they do it. Have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you on Monday. The Business of Tech is written and produced by me, Dave Sobel, under Ethics Guidelines, posted at businessof.tech. If you like the content, please make sure to hit that like button, follow, or subscribe. It's free and easy, and the best way to support the show and help us grow. You can also check out our Patreon, where you can join the Business of Tech community at patreon.com slash MSP Radio, or buy our Why Do We Care merch at businessof.tech. Finally, if you're interested in advertising on the show, visit mspradio.com slash engage. Once again, thanks for listening to me, and I will talk to you again on our next episode of the Business of Tech. Part of the MSP Radio Network.